Hello, this is Peter from One CNC UK, and what we are going to focus on in this video is creating the geometry required for two axis lathe manufacture. Now, for a lathe project, all you need is half of the geometry, and we can create this geometry using the provided CAD tools on the left hand side of the screen, or we can import wireframe geometry, solid models, or surfaces to create those required shapes as well. So let's go ahead and import a model. We're going to File, Import. We're going to be importing a step file. We'll select the file and open. OK, and then finish the form. And there we have the solid model we've just imported. Now, to create the geometry required to manufacture that part, we just go into our model tools and we extract lathe profile. And straight away, there is the geometry on the screen we need to cut the part. So a very quick, a very easy, and a very powerful way of extracting geometry from solid models. Now let's bring in some wireframe geometry. So this could be an electronic drawing you've been sent in by your customer. Now, all we would need to do in that case would be to turn off the dimensions and we could put our lathe toolpath directly onto the customer supplied geometry. This could have also been a print that we'd been sent and we could very easily turn that print into wireframe using our very powerful CAD tools over on the left hand side. So we're now going to have a look and see how we can use our CAD tools to create this profile. Now, just before we get started, if I turn the dimensions layer off, when you're using point lines or arcs, there are three methods of input. We can input via the world coordinates, we can input incrementally, and 1CNC also has an intelligent cursor. That will allow you to snap to the beginning and the middle of lines. When working with arcs, you can snap to the four quadrants of circles, you can snap to the center of the arcs, and you can also snap to the fillet center. So it makes geometry very, very quick, very, very simple. Now, just again, before we do get started, you'll notice my coordinate input system is set to X and Y. Obviously, lathe works in X and Z, but just for coordinate input purposes, I'm set to X and Y. This is very easily changed. You just go into File, one CNC properties, and there you can change your coordinate format from X, Y, Z to Z, X, and Y if you prefer. And you can also change from imperial input to metric input at the click of a button. So very, very quick, very, very simple. So let's have a look at creating this drawing from scratch. I'm just going to turn off the drawing layer. I'm going to put this drawing onto a new layer. So I'm just going to add a layer and I'm just going to rename that layer and call it new. You can start this drawing from wherever you like. There is no set rule. It is down to just personal preference. So I'm going to start mine at the base of the bore. So I'm going to start off with my line command. I want to start in my X coordinate of minus 25.4 and Y zero. And to accept those coordinates, you just simply select OK. I now want to do a Y move up to 19.05. I'm going to come back to X0. Again, all the time just selecting this import using OK. And then I'm going to climb in Y up to 31.75. I'm now going to do a move in X to minus 7.62. And at this point, I'm going to right hand mouse click and end the drawing command. The reason for that is if I go back to the drawing, you can see this groove detail is all dimensioned incrementally. So I'm now going to swap over to incremental input. I'm going to go back into my line functions. This time, as I say, I'm going to be using incremental input. And I want to start my line where that other piece of geometry ended. So just simply left click. So incremental input. I don't want to move anywhere in X, but I do want to move in Y minus 
0.54. I don't want to move in Y anymore, so I can zero that out. And my next X coordinate was minus 9.525. I don't want to move in X again, so I'm going to zero that out. And my Y move is back up 2.54. I know the end of that line, so I'm going to go back into my world coordinates and type in minus 31.75. My next piece of geometry is an angle, 30 degrees from horizontal. Now, one CNC works from 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. So my angle is going to be along 150 degrees. So I'm now going to lock my angle at 150 degrees. You'll see now when I move my cursor, that angle is locked. And I don't know where that angle finishes. So I'm just going to left click to end the command. I'm going to use my trim commands a little bit later on to bring the horizontal line in to the angled line. So I know the Y coordinate of this line. So we're just going to type in 44.45. It's now locked on 44.45. So I'm just going to generally left click to give it a start point in X. I know where the X finishes, which is minus 63.5. I then want to move up in Y to 47.625. And finally, an end point in X of minus 79.375 and right hand mouse click to finish. Now I want to trim this angle into this line. So I'm going to go on the left hand side of the screen. I'm going to use my trim and break options. Lots and lots of different ways we can trim geometry. For this example I'm going to use trim 2 and the way trim 2 works is you select the side of the line you want to keep which in this case is the left hand side and the line that you want to intersect to. Simply left hand mouse click. So that is our basic geometry sorted out. So what I want to do now is put the chamfers and the fillets on. Chamfers are obviously a line command. So we're going to go into lines. We're going to select chamfer and we're going to give it a chamfer distance. And the way the chamfer tool works is you select one of the lines when you move to the other line, you get a preview of what you're about to produce. If you haven't set your chamfer distance right at this point, which I haven't, I'm just going to put it at 0.5 millimeters. We then just left click. Now I'm just going to use my pan to take it to the right hand side of the part. And as I say, we just click the two lines that we want chamfering. It doesn't matter in which direction you do these chamfers, it works both ways. And those are our chamfers complete. I now want to put the fillet rads on. So fillet is obviously an arc command. We can go into fillet. We can give it our fillet size of 1.6 millimeters. And again working exactly as we did with the chamfer tool, you just select the two lines that you want filleting. Beginning of the taper and then finally up to the shoulder. Now, as I say, this fillet radius remains active. You don't need to escape out of it to change it. The fillet radius is in the groove, R.2. So we can just, again, modify the size of the fillet and right-click to finish. And there is our profile done. So we're in a position now where we can start putting our lathe tool path on. But I'm going to go one stage further with this. I'm going to view this as a 3D representation. So I'm going to go into my model tools again. This time we're going to create a lathe model and then we sim just simply select the geometry. And there we have a 3D representation of the part. Now again, I'm going to go a little bit further. I've already imported a model of a chuck. So now we have the complete setup on our lathe. When we go into preview toolpaths, when we've created our toolpaths, I've got a good representation of everything that is going to happen on our machine tool. Well, we're going to put the toolpaths on on a later video. 
So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please contact us at the UK branch. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.